Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Thursday. It is your girl, CEO C. Wall, checking in. I'm trying to move my chair up. Hello, y'all. How's everybody doing? I already see my mom has checked in. Hey, Ma. Hello, hello, hello. We are all gathering and coming right on in to the virtual couch. What's up, Damon? What is up? What is up? What is up? Seaball family, listen. There's a Wizards preseason game going on right now. The Washington football team won again. Can we say again? All right. Cameron Mingo, I know you are checked in and watching the Wizards. I knew that you were. Stephen Dennis from my Hampton family. I'm a, Stephen, listen, you, you watch the show every week. Guess what now, Stephen? Guess what? You are... Part of my Hampton family, okay? So welcome and hello to you. You guys, make sure, make sure you are gathering your DC sports loving family and friends into the live discussion. Because you can always go back and watch the, watch the show, of course. Of course. But the live discussion is where it's at, right y'all? You have to get all of your comments in. You have to get your feelings out. And we can sit here and talk about all of this together. Our show facilitator, our virtual facilitator online, our sister Joy. Everybody say what's up to her. She keeps the conversation held down online for you guys. Miss Raynell, I see that you've checked in. I see that you have checked in. I'm trying to give you all time to make sure you get your DC Sports loving family and friends on up in this discussion. Because as always, when is there a dull moment in DC Sports? When, 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 when is there a dull moment? I'm going to wait for you all to answer that question. Who's first? Who's first? Who's first? You already know the answer to that question is never, never, ever, 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 ever. There is never a dull moment in DC sports. And this week proves no different, right? And y'all know, I already see my guy Troy checking in. I, I, I almost thought I was going to dip right on into the Washington football team. I said, you know what? The Washington football team has the nerve to be on a winning streak. Mike, I see you done checked in, Mike. What's up? I, listen, I said to myself, we're just going to do Washington football the whole entire time. But y'all know I can't do that. I could, and I have, and I should, but I'm not. So, it's a couple of, we got to get through the, the, the updates first. We got to get through the updates. Couple things that I want to mention to you all so that you all are aware. So, earlier this week, I had the pleasure of being in on a all-women's sports podcast hosted by Darrell Owens of Legacy Maker Sports. I posted that show it aired Tuesday at 8 so it was an all women's cast we did talk some Washington football we talked Wizards what was the topics we talked about Alex Smith being the long term um, option at quarterback for uh, the football team we talked about can Westbrook and Bill work in DC and I think we even talked some Eagles they had me on there talking about the Philadelphia Eagles y'all oh my god but it was beautiful. I enjoyed myself, okay? 
So it was great. So check that out. Shout out to Darrell Owens of Legacy Maker Sports for inviting me and having me on. I had an amazing time and I, and I shared the virtual panel with some amazing ladies, so it was super cool. My second announcement, as you all may have seen, um, I have just uh, launched along with three of my Wizards and Mystics media colleagues, um, a Wizards podcast. It is a show. It is on YouTube. Um, it will be launched on all of the podcast platforms so i wanted to let you all know that i'm very excited about that project so i want you all to tune in subscribe to the channel it is the triple w sports podcast that's the one i'm doing with the ladies it's the triple w sports podcast so you all tune in enjoy it have fun with us so it's another show for you all to watch so guess what you might see me two times in a week. You, you may not have to wait until Thursdays to see me. Okay? So, with all of that being said, I see folks checking in and all of that. So, let's go ahead and get started. But I had to get the church announcements out first. Y'all know how that go. First things first, because this is an all DC sports show. I have to mention, and I might butcher his last name. Please, Lord, I hope that I don't. Um... Caps goalie Henrik Lundqvist. I probably butchered his last name. Either way, Henrik has to step away from the game of hockey. He has a very serious heart condition, so he must step away. So let's all say um, our prayers for Henrik and his family. Um, everyone seems very devastated by this news. If you all recall, they just signed Henrik over in the off season. Uh, so, um, no one is, is as devastated or more devastated than Henrik, of course, but let's keep him and his family in prayer as he goes through this, um, very challenging time, um, and just praying that he gets well soon, whatever, you know, that condition may be. Um, so shout out to him and his family for certain. Moving on to the Wizards. So I have to ask this question. The Wizards are playing right now. I've already said that. I didn't said that. I said the Wizards are playing right now. <clears throat> I was watching the Wizards before I joined you all. And I'll be watching the Wizards after we conclude. Um, preseason, right? It's just preseason. But I really want to know you all's feelings on how much preseason just, you know, really matters. The Wizards are playing the Detroit Pistons. They're here. They're home. Um... And I'm already seeing comments about Scott Brooks got to go. And I don't know if you all know where I'm going with this already. But <clears throat> um, Dallas Bertans is dealing with a, a minor injury. So I know that he's out. Russell Westbrook was out Sunday against the Nets. He's also out tonight. So I see a lot of comments. And around fans being disappointed that Russell Westbrook isn't playing. If, even if it's just for a quarter, they feel like, hey, they should be, they should be um, playing. And so I want to know you all's thoughts on this. I have thoughts. Of course I do, right? Of course I have thoughts. <laughs> but seriously, I know some of my, 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 my great DC sports fans, I saw you, Russ. I see you, Wallace. Um, of course, Mazdak, the Seawall Chaplain is on. How important is it to get the stars out there? So I feel like this. Other stars are playing. So why isn't Westbrook playing? Here's the thing. Russell Westbrook wants to play. He don't have no problems with it. I see you, Eugene. What's up? What's up with that? Somebody help me understand. Because I'm like, well, he can get out there for a quarter, can he? At least. I think, I think the challenge in the thought process, and I saw folks saying, hey, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that important. Like Cameron Mingo said, NBA preseason means nothing. You know, and the mind you're saying it to, it's, it's just preseason, no worries. But I think there is something to be said about 
the perception, right? I mean, I see Chief of DC. I see you out there saying it's important to get your feet wet. Waller says Westbrook should be playing. You know, I think if, if the other stars are playing, you got other you got champions out here playing, then then why not, Westbrook? Um, even if it is just for 15 minutes, um, it matters. It matters. You got to get those rotations. You got to see the chemistry. As I see the word chemistry in the in the chat as well. I'm not an advocate. It's like you watch what other people are doing. Other teams that are preparing to win, other teams that have won at the highest level, those players are playing. So I can't tell you why Russell Westbrook isn't playing other than it's the coach's decision. It's, it's, it's Scott Brooks. It's his decision. It's his decision. Um... Mm. And that's all I got. I don't have I don't have anything else other than it's his decision. That's what he said in the presser. That's what's been said. It's his decision. Um, I don't think it's a good one. But you know what else is new? <laughs> in terms of my thoughts on his decision making. But I mean, hey, I don't understand it. No, it's not a big deal. But I think there is something to be said when you can get your star players out on the court. They, you know, out on the court. So it, it needs to be something said about building that chemistry, getting out there with your teammates. And I'm just not sure what this is. I see Russ's comment about exactly right. It's about getting game reps with your teammates. And this is a typical Scott Brooks move. Like I said, I typically don't agree with most things. Scott Brooks is a nice man. I'm going to say that every single time that Scott Brooks is a nice man because he's very nice. But it's typically... I, as usual, I don't agree with this decision. And while it may not mean anything, there is something to be said in building this chemistry with this team and just getting those reps. And 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 no, Westbrook isn't hurt. It's nothing. It's nothing going on of that sort. There's no underlying injuries and stuff that people are just being all secretive about. That's not it. Um. So. Seeing a lot of good discussion around LBJ and AD and others playing. But, hey, listen, we done seen the stars get out on the court. So, Scott Brooks, you win, as always, you know. But, I don't know. Somebody give me a, a, a check on the score and what's happening in the game currently. Um, so, so, I don't know. Um... I don't have anything else to say about the Wizards right now regarding their first preseason game the other night against the Brooklyn Nets. Um, I think I think the only thing that I have to say is Denny, that daggone Denny, I'll mess his last name up too, but I'm going to get, you know, he's good. Yeah, that one right there. We're going to keep our eye on Denny. We're going to keep our eyes on Denny. I'm doing like this because my TV is right there and it's on. And I'm trying not to watch it because I'm trying to talk to y'all. And y'all will see me. If I start watching the game, moment of transparency. If I start watching that game, like seriously, y'all are going to be watching me watching the game. Because I'll forget that y'all are even... I, I'll know that y'all are here, but then I'll start talking about the game and it'll just... I like Denny a lot. Um, so we're gonna see what's up with, with Denny. That's that's all I that's all I have thus far. Um I don't really have much else to share. Um I mean it's it is preseason, like everyone says. We gotta keep saying, you know. Denny. That's all I got from the first from the first first I was about to say first show, first game. That's all I have. I do need to shout out Bradley Bill and his Christmas give back initiative that will take place at the United Medical Center in Southeast DC this coming Saturday. Um, the event will provide 200 catered meals. Um, they're giving out BB3 Christmas cards, face masks, 
100, $100 Visa gift cards, 70 pairs of Air Jordan sneakers. Speaking of all this Air Jordan stuff, you know Bradley Beal is one of the newest members of Jumpman. Did we talk about that yet here? Well, I don't, I don't think we did. Congratulations to him. <clears throat> Congratulations to him. I think it's awesome. I think he deserves it. So I'm happy for the guy. You know, and shout out to him for his Christmas give back initiative that will take place this Saturday, downtown DC. Um, of course, and this is just for kicks. I don't know if everyone has heard um, the rumors about Giannis wanting the Bucks to target Bradley Bill. Um, but what else is new, y'all? Right? Everybody wants Brad. He's a wanted man in that league, rightfully so. So, hey, just thought I'd throw that out there about the rumor mill because, you know, the rumor mill is always fun to address at times. So I thought that was cute that that came out. We got, how many more minutes we got together? 15, 14, 13, I don't know. I got three different clocks and they all say something different. The Washington football team. Where are my Washington football team fans? Where are you? Hello, hello, hello. Check in, Washington football team fans. The rest of the show is for you all. Make sure your Washington football team loving family and friends are checking in to this one here. Checking in. I, I have a pen out here on my table and I don't know why. I felt like maybe I was going to write something down while you all were here, but... I don't know. We haven't played this game in a while. One word. The one word game. Share one word of how you, well, Russ already gave us his word, and it's believe. One word to describe how you felt after the game versus the San Francisco 49ers. I want to see your one word. Russ already gave us his word. Believe is a good word. You know, while you all are giving your one word, I was like, I think people wanted the Washington football let me back up. The Washington football team is a hated team in this area. So Washington football team fans, let me tell y'all something. Don't let anybody punk you into feeling like you can't be happy when the football team wins. Why do people want to make Washington football team fans feel like you can't be happy when they win? What, what is that? I don't understand that. I, what is, what is that hate? What is that hate about? Like, no, seriously. Let's be, let's be real for a minute, my fellow Washington football team fans. It's not right. Then the, the little teams win a little measly five or six wins, and guess what they're doing? They're all in your news feed wearing their team gear, right? It's okay for them, but as soon as the Washington football team win a game, here we go. Everybody, where they think they're going to the Super Bowl, Oh, uh, and especially with the 49ers fans, it was real. Well, it's a bunch of injuries. They were supposed to win. They was this and that. But at the same token, you, you feel like your team is injury-ridden. Nobody cared when the 49ers was slipping and sliding all over FedEx Field last year. Nobody cared. The Washington football team had a million injuries last year. No one cared. So you mean to tell me people can't be happy? People can't be happy? I don't know. I saw someone say happy. I see optimistic. I see. A, I saw a bunch of all positive. I saw defense. All bunch of positive one words. Guess what? I want to tell y'all. Listen, and I'm hard on the Washington football team. I'm very. I'm y'all. I'm hard on them because I can be a perfectionist at at times. Only at times. Don't let don't let my seawall team tell you any different. Only at times. Not a perfectionist all the time. Only sometimes. But listen. They won the game. As bad as that offense played, because we're going to get to that. I do have to talk about that now, y'all. I have to do what's right and talk about 
the offense. The team found a way to win. You can't ask for anything else. You can't. You cannot ask for anything else when they find a way to win. When the defense says, all right, our offense ain't cranking today. That means we got to get it. We got it. Okay. I can't be mad at that. I cannot be mad at that at all. I think people thought, I think folks thought that, you know, Kyle Shanahan and Trent Williams and Jordan Reed was going to have some, you know, some miraculous day against the Washington football team so they can feel vindicated in all their bitter issues against this franchise. But guess what? It didn't happen. It wasn't going to happen. Okay? So they, I don't know why people are so upset. They might want to prepare themselves for the folks that are upset to be even more upset for the next couple of weeks. They need to respect the fact that they have a coach in Ron Rivera. One thing I can appreciate so much about Ron Rivera is that he continues to preach two things, two things that I enjoy him preaching. He preaches a lot of things, but two things that have been a consistent trend with him. It's humility and professionalism. I love that. I love that. Keep and he's going to talk a little trash, too, because I don't know if y'all heard him at that post-game, you know, speech when he said, is there's nobody in this league that wants to play us right now. I ain't mad at you, coach. Go ahead and talk that trash, coach. Go ahead and talk that trash just a tad bit to let them know. It's nobody that wants to play us right now. However, be a professional. Be a professional. And stay a professional. I love it. I'm not mad at it one bit. And I see your comment, Mike, about Wizards still having 27. That's a shame. But we stick to Washington football for a minute. So I, I am excited because there's nobody that is watching this team that can say that this team has not improved in this last year. The team has absolutely improved. Hands down improved. Attitude alone has improved. Now it was looking a little bleak there at the beginning of the season. But you got a group of guys that believe they can win and they can beat the other guys on the side of that line and that are going to play for each other. So going back to the point I said a moment ago, okay, defense, offense ain't getting cranking. We got us. That's what the defense going to say. We got us. We got us. We got us. The defense and Tress Way. Because I'm going to tell you something. Tress Way, did y'all see Tress Way tackle somebody on Sunday? Now that, that bothered me because I said, now wait a minute, what is Tress could nobody else tackle that man? Trask got to go out here and tackle that man. So it's still some areas of improvement. But the team did what they needed to do. Do I need Do I need to even say this? Do I need to even say this out loud? Do I even need to say the two words, Chase and Young? Do I even need to say that? That goes without saying, right? Chase Young, Cameron Curl, listen. They balled out. That defense is, is they're coming together and they're playing for each other. And when one position group or one group is, is not and, and got it going, right? Then the next one say, we got us. Don't even worry about it. We got us. We going to hold up. And we got to talk about the offense. I don't know. I'm not certain if, if this was Alex calf that was bothering him in which because listen both quarterbacks if we want to talk about Alex and Haskins we want to be completely honest both quarterbacks did not play well at all on Sunday let me go back to Ron Rivera for a moment because I want to I want to say this out loud too I felt confident even I felt confident from from what I understand of of Haskins 
trying to take the um, persona of Alex Smith and learning from Alex, I felt comfortable when Coach Rivera said, Alex not going back out there. And he kept asking Zen, if you all remember at the time, the Washington football team was winning. They were up. So Ron Rivera says, Dwayne should be able to handle this next 30 minutes. Because we're not going to lose this game. Now, I see DeMond's point here. Haskins almost gave the game away. It, it got a little touch and go there. Got a little touch and go. There was a couple touch and go moments. I don't. I, we can talk about Haskins. But I'm going to talk about that touch and go moment on defense. Because I know I got a little upset. And I know I talked to my guy, Sherrod Olafon. He's on the originator. Everybody say what's up to Sherrod. And Sherrod mentions him. He said, well, that was a bad call. That unnecessary roughness penalty on Montez Sweat on third down. That bothered me. That that irritated my life a little bit, y'all. I'm going to be honest with my family here. It irritated my life. I didn't like it at all because I felt like that needed to be a three and out, but that kept that drive alive where the 49ers ultimately ended up scoring and converted a, a, a two-point conversion. I, I didn't like that. I, I didn't enjoy that at all. And so they held on. They held on. And Ron Rivera making the, the decision to say, I'm thinking long game. We're winning this game. These guys can beat, they believe they can beat the 49ers, and we know they can beat the 49ers. So we're going to beat the 49ers. We're in the lead. They're not, we're not going to let them come back. Haskins, you can handle this 30 minutes. I appreciated that because the message to me was more so about making sure Alex was okay for the long term versus putting Haskins on the spot. Hey, listen, you've been following this man. You've been watching him. You've been in the film room. You've been studying, doing what you're supposed to do the last month. Go ahead. Just please keep yourself together out there. Please. Number seven, please for all of us. And they did. It got ugly. Like DeMond said, it got, woo, it was almost, but you got to think long term. And that's a consistent thing that Ron Rivera has been showing us all season. He's not thinking today. He wasn't thinking week two, week three, week four. We used to week to week around here. He's thinking long game. He has always been very open and honest and said from the beginning, I, we, hey, we can win a division get in the playoffs. All you got to do is look at, look, at your, look at your division. Look. It's not like they were all that good. So Washington had a chance. And Ron Rivera believed that from the very beginning. Even when, hey, listen, I didn't. When he was saying they got a chance to make the division, I was like, Ron is lunching. Hey, listen. Ron is in there with those guys. I'm not. We not. So, hey. And we've seen the progression. I can appreciate that. I always appreciate progression. I can also appreciate when we've seen mistakes, they recover. I, I, I said that last week or either the week before. They, they, they make a mistake, they recover. They're showing glimpses of resilience. And that's what good teams do. That's what good teams do. And we're seeing glimpses of what things that good teams do. I can appreciate that. I will always appreciate that. Listen. They don't want six games. No, it's not a whole lot, but it's three more than they won last year. And I'm not going to forget to mention this. They are sitting atop of the NFC East right now. If we want to move quickly to the next, to the kind of same topic, Seattle. Listen, I was hoping that Seattle was going to have a bad day like they did against the New York Giants. That just goes to show, but who knows what could happen on Sunday. Here's what I'm sure of. This team going to fight because we've been watching them fight. We've been watching them fight. That's all we can ask for, y'all. 60 minutes of fight. That's all they, and that's what they're doing. They're going to fight. Now, the defense is probably looking forward to keeping Russell Wilson in the dirt. And I can appreciate that too. 
as much as I enjoy watching Russell Wilson play. Don't matter to me on Sunday. I hope you get out of there alive, but I hope you don't get out of there with a W. So, hey, listen. The football team going to keep being the underdog. And that's okay. That's all right. They get through this. We're going to see what's up. Because every week is different. Every single week is different. And I'm up for the challenge and watching how this team does against the caliber of quarterback like Russell and team and coach, whole, whole organization like Seattle. Let me also say this. When we talk about other coaches and staff, I'm going to go right back to Ron Rivera again. I'm going to go back to Alex Smith again. We're not used to having people leading the football team that's actually well-liked and well-respected because those are two different things. Some people might not like you, but they respect you. These people are liked and they're respected. Their culture, it, it's going to follow them. I'm here to see it. I'm here, I'm here for it. Now, there was a couple things that happened today where DeShazer ever has gone to injured reserve. I think he had surgery this morning. He's on IR. Uh, Lamar Miller, running back Lamar Miller was signed because of the COVID protocols. He won't even play this week. So, okay. It wasn't like they got him for this game. They think a long term. These are, this is a long term situation. Because I believe that Ron Rivera believes that this team is going to the playoffs. I do believe that that's what he believes. And he got his guys believing the exact same thing. Do y'all believe it? Y'all tell me. Well, before we close out, we got to do bold predictions. And when we're doing bold predictions, also let me know if you believe that the Washington football team is going to hold on to that first place spot and make the playoffs. That would be something, wouldn't it? Mm. While you all are sharing that, and, and letting and sharing your bold predictions and, and do you believe the Washington football team, this, this number one spot, they can cancel that. That's, 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 that's WFTs. So everybody else can forget about it. If you believe that, then I'm with y'all. That's your favorite. That's your favorite. Is Russ still on? That's Russ favorite word. Believe. And I sit up there and I'd be like, nope. Mm -mm. But I'm going to get on board with everybody else. Because I see, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all what it is. I don't like how the offense moves too slow. They start out too slow for me. I need, I need some movement on offense for me to be like, yes, we got it. It's moving too, it start out too slow. Randall, 24-17, the Washington football team. Joy's going to hold on to it, hold on to her bold prediction. The Seahawks going to get shut out. She, Steven and Joy on the same, on the same page. Blowout. And like Cameron said, we're going to keep the NFC East lead in his bold prediction. Oh, Russell Wilson getting picked off three times. I would love to see it. I'm a fan, just not on Sunday. I love it. Another scoop and score. And hold Seattle to under 17 and win the game. Whoop. Bernard. Bernard Plummer. That's my guy right there. Playing in the second round of the playoffs. Hey, listen. Defense wins championships. They going old school on this defense, ain't they? They going old school. They busting everybody. They just... Mm. I wouldn't want to play them. I agree with Ron Rivera. There's nobody out here that wants to play us right now. Yeah, because y'all act out, out there acting crazy. I might hurt somebody. Then remember at one point that's all they were doing was hurting people. Anybody that played this Washington football defense end up leaving on the cart or something. It would be ridiculous. It's crazy. Five sacks by the defense. Six sacks. Wait, I said five. Or was it six? My my is my vision leaving me? Listen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that this team has a great shot because they are playing in, 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 
like like they don't put like this. They're playing like they don't want to lose. That's what they playing like. They playing like uh uh. We we leaving out of your we leaving out of here with a W. Because that's what it takes. So Alex Smith still has not practiced. Alex Smith still has not practiced. Um, Ron Rivera said he feels confident. You know, Alex is such a smart football player. If you saw saw the press conference today, he said Alex is such a smart football player that if he did not take any reps this week, he'd be okay with that and, and starting him still on Sunday. We got to keep watching that one. I see, I see Kev. I got a sack in Wilson five times. I agree. The offense has to lean towards the run game. Absolutely. Still a close game, I see. 22 to 20, but hey, as long as we come out with the W, as long as we come out with the W. Um, Gibson did get some work today. That turf toe lingers, and you never, you can't tell with that turf toe situation, Stephen. So that turf toe situation, it lingers. He got a little bit of work today on the side, but other than that, you know, it's just, you, you can't tell. You can't tell. So, you guys... Will we be celebrating another W next week? And next week is Christmas. It's Christmas. Wait. I'm still doing a show just so everybody knows. So everybody check it out. Listen. Wear your ugly sweater. I don't, I don't think I have an ugly sweater. Maybe I do. Wear your Christmas hat, your ugly sweater, because when we get in the chat, you all got to drop the pictures of your ugly sweater, your Christmas hat, whatever it is that you rocking with on Christmas Eve, because we are going to have a show next week for Christmas Eve. And, if, you know, prayerfully all goes well. We're going to do a Christmas Eve and we're going to do the following Thursday on New Year's Eve too. So we, we, hopefully we celebrating all that we, we celebrating and we also will still do a show. We're going to be on our happy, happy holidays next week. And we're going, the week after that, we're going to be on, thank the Lord, trying to get into another year. So I see Joy sharing with everybody. Always prayers to everybody. Wear your mask. Wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. Social distance. Randall, if you can still tune in from Chicago, my friend. You know we're going to be right here. Thank you all so much. Did you all have fun? I hope you did. I absolutely did. And it's always, see, I'm trying to reserve how much fun that I'm having with the Washington football team winning because that's what I should do. I shouldn't act all crazy. But, you know, I, I, I sometimes I be euphoric happy after they win. Sometimes I be about to pass out. Because I never know if they're about to lose at the last minute. Or I don't even know what's going on. Because it's so exciting. But it feels good to win, doesn't it? This fan base deserves it. So listen. Blessings to everyone. Much love, you guys. And I will see all of you on the virtual couch next week. <laughs>